This is about creating your own Excel user functions, meaning a function you use in Excel itself, not in a program. So let's take a look here. Uh, there are actually over 400 functions that Excel provides for users, and um, I have a suspicion that they take a look at the code people write and the things people do and try to come up with whatever functions people might want to use on a general basis, but of course they can't do every possible function that anyone might want. And sometimes it's very convenient to have a function which is not provided. So we have a workbook called User Function Demo where we have a function that finds the middle value of three numbers. Now how do you go about creating something like that? Well the first thing is to create a module for it and the way you do that, you go to the same button that you would use to insert a user form, but if you push here, you can see that you can also create a module. And that's what I've done. Um, I already did that. And under modules here, I have one called My Functions. And if I view the code, here it is. Okay, so here I've written the code. Um, let's go back for a sec and continue with the presentation. So here I'm showing you that you choose module and okay um, to create the name my functions you change the module name which you do right here so the my functions module and the only property you have available to work with is the name okay now um, once you write the function its name is going to show up in Excel, the same way an Excel provided function will show up. So I named mine middle, and let's look at the code here. I just wrote function middle. It has, um, now this one has arguments, and I think this may be the first time we actually wrote a function with arguments. So let's take a minute to look at that. This one has three arguments. I'm calling them num1, num2, and num3, and those will be the three numbers that we want to find the middle value of. They're all doubles, and I have to say what type each one is. And since this is a function that returns a value, it has a type itself, the type of the value it returns. And here, we want it to return a double. So we put as double, and you'll notice that comes in the header after the end of the parentheses. Okay, now um, I'm going to use one local variable in here. I'm calling it midval and I declared it here. Now here's my code and um, I'll first test to see if it's num2. So what would be true if it's num2? Well then I'd have num1 greater than or equal to num2 and num2 greater than or equal to num3. That's one way it could happen if num1 is the biggest one or if num3 is the biggest one, it'll be like this, num3 greater than or equal to num2, and num2 greater than or equal to num1. And in that case, the middle value is num2 in either of those two cases. Now, I could have separated these cases, uh, you know, and had four options, uh, one for each of these cases. Might have been a tiny bit clearer, but I wanted to show you a, a really compound uh, conditional, given the stuff we did last week, and also you'll notice that I'm doing a line continuation here because actually this is all logically one big line. Okay, now for num1, I have exactly the opposite. If num1 is going to be in the middle, there's two scenarios. One is that num2 is the biggest, so it looks like this, num2 greater than or equal to num1, and num1 greater than or equal to num3, or I could have the other way around with num3 is the biggest. Finally, if it's not num1 or num2, then the middle value must be num3, and that's my final choice. And here's how I return the value. You'll see how I'm using the name of my function, which I wrote in all caps to be consistent with the way Excel names its functions. And so I just assign the value midval to the function name middle. And that's the end of my function. And I have another function down here I'll show you in a minute. Let's go back. Um, actually to the spreadsheet here, and you'll notice here I have two, three numbers, three, four, and one, and here I'm finding the middle, 
So I write equals sign. I use my function middle that I wrote the same way I would use an Excel function. And I have my three arguments, which are the elements in A1, B1, and C1. Now just to show you this actually works, let's try putting um, O of 5 in here and push return. And now 4 is the middle value, and you can see it changed it. Okay. So um, very nicely, once you've written your function, its name will show up in the list that Excel presents to choose from when you're trying to show uh, to write a formula. And I just showed it to you in action. Now, you can add a description um, that shows up for the user to tell them what the function does. And to do that, you go to the macros and you type your name. It's not, it doesn't show up in the list here because it's not a workbook macro. It's in its own separate module. Okay, so once I type it, then that gives me a place to write um, my description. And here's what I write. It takes three double arguments, returns the value of the middle one, and I gave an example. And this is consistent with the way the Excel descriptions are. Uh, you can also make a shortcut key, and as usual, if you want to do that, it's great. If you use some function that you write all the time, a shortcut key can be very valuable. Just make sure you don't assign it a shortcut that's already used for something uh, important in Excel, or otherwise you'll interfere with that because it'll use yours, um, presumably. Okay, now there's another nice example I wanted to show you. This one I got uh, from the website exceltip.com, which I found very useful, and I gave a, uh, a credit to the guy who wrote it. And here's the idea. Excel has a weekday function, which returns the number of the weekday uh, of a date that you give it. So it takes a date as a parameter, and it gives the number representing the day. And what we want to do is have a macro that returns a name of a day instead of a number. So if we come back to our workbook here and uh, go over to Visual Basic, I've got the code here. And another reason I wanted to show you this is that it makes a nice use of the case, the select case, uh, which, remember, is another kind of conditional that we can use. So here um, I've declared day number is integer. The, the parameter here, the day name, is a date. So this is my function day name. Input date is the name I'm giving the parameter. And um, the value it's going to return, so the date is the parameters type. The function itself is going to return a day name, which is a string. So the type of the function here is string. OK, so day number, I declared it as integer instead of long, because I know it's always going to be a number between 1 and 7. Um, Day number equals uh, weekday of the input date. And VB Sunday, this is a parameter you give to uh, Excel's weekday function, telling it that you want the week to start with Sunday, so that Sunday gets a number one. And then here, I've just written um, my cases. So for each number, I say what the day name should be. And uh, that's it, end of function. OK, and over here, I have an example. You can see here I'm using my daynum function with this guy as a parameter. And again, to demonstrate that it works, let's give it another date. Let's say um, 09-13-2011. Um, and that's Tuesday. OK, so um, just another example there. And I just explained the code. This slide has it. Uh, I did. I always give the type of the value returned. There was nothing making me do that, but I think it's important. Uh, again, I'll emphasize the definition ends with n function instead of n sub, because this is a function subroutine that returns a value, and so it's a distinct uh, category of subroutine, and 
Excel notices that by putting the end function. Okay, and I believe I mean, this is just showing you the example, and that's it. All right.